So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Scalloped Edge Crochet Washcloth. This is a two in one video today. I'm going to be demonstrating this with Red Heart Scrubby which I tried for the very first time an hour ago. And then I'm gonna be doing the second half of this tutorial using the same exact pattern but using Lily Sugar and Cream. So if you don't see the stitches which you may not within the Scrubby yarn you can see how it's done with the regular yarn the regular cotton yarn. So this is how it turns out. Uh, this particular one I haven't done the scallop judge yet but this is Red Heart Scrubby yarn just like you see on the shelf. So I wanted to give you some first impressions that when I saw this on the shelf it feels really hard uh, but when I took the ball band off this thing totally completely relaxes right out. So it's actually a lot softer and because I crochet without holding the yarn too tightly in my hand I did not have an issue of it um, scraping across my hand like I thought it would. So and but that's what creates the whole idea of it being a scrubby. So I'm really quite excited about it. It's 100% polyester and I'm going to be demonstrating this particular pattern using this yarn for the first um, time here on camera and then the second half we'll go for a regular yarn just to demonstrate the whole thing. So let's begin. To do this you'll need a five and a half millimeter size H crochet hook and Red Heart Scrubby or a 100% cotton yarn just like you would get with Bernat Handicrafter or Lily Sugar and Cream or Peaches and Cream. So leaving on a longer tail so that you can deal with the end later with the tapestry needle which I will demonstrate we're gonna create a slip knot. So this is not a beginner level project in this sense. It's an easy level. And now the one is on the hook. It doesn't count as one and you only wanna chain 19. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18 and 19. That is your beginning chain. Let's begin the next row. Now if you look really carefully you can see the core of the yarn and then you can see all these little nubbly things that come out that create the scrubbing power. So you have to trust in yourself. It reminds me a lot of uh, uh, Bernat Pip Squeak yarn in the sense that you use your fingertips to feel the openings. But once you get past the first row is really quite simple because you can see clearly what they are. So I'm gonna go third stitch or third chain from the hook. So one, two and three and turn it over and get the back hump of that chain. And if you're not sure just grab any chain that you think is the third and then just stay consistent. So we're gonna, so you're going to yarn over and go to the third and then yarning over pulling it through and then yarning over pulling it through. We're gonna do a cluster. So that was one of those clusters. So that's one part of it. So we're gonna wrap again going into the same chain, pull through and then pull through two loops on the hook and then do it again. You yarn over going into the same chain, pull through, pull through two and now you should be able to count a total of four loops on the hook. Do you see the four? And then pull through all four. And then chain one to lock it to move on. Now back down on the chain you're gonna skip the next chain and go to the second over. Just guess where you think it is. Chance are you could be right. And then you just yarn over go into that chain and do the same thing. So yarning over pulling it through pull through two and hold. In the same chain again yarn over and in, in pull through pull through two and hold. Do one more time pull through pull through two and hold and you'll see four loops again on the hook. Pull through all four and then chain one to move on. So skipping the chain again down on the row. Go into the back hump only and do these clusters. There's always, you have to do it always three times and then you end up with four loops on the hook. Pull through everything, chain one to move on. Skipping the next chain and going down. So please go all the way across your chain doing the same motion and I'll see you at the end of the chain in just a moment. So I've just chained one and I'm coming into my last chain here and I'm doing my last cluster. So it's you do that same step three times and then pull through all four loops and then that's it. And pull through all four. Now you, when you're done this you should be able to count nine or nine clusters. So just kind of pull it apart. You can see it. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, and nine. So you have nine. So you're gonna turn your work and then row number two is the repeat until you get five and a half inches tall. Let's do row number two and beyond. As I promised you, now that we have it started, it's gonna get much easier. So you're going to chain two. It doesn't count as a stitch at all. And what I need you to do is that I need you to come into the first space between the clusters and just wrap and make another cluster. And you do that same thing that you already know that you were doing in the chain. And you do that three times and then you get the four loops back on the hook. Yarn over, pull through everything, chain one and then move to the next space in between the next two clusters. So now that you're playing in the space, you don't have to worry about individual stitch work in order to see it because you can clearly find the space. Chain one to move on and do that all the way across for row number two. So the ending of row number two is the only special thing that is really about that and I'll deal with that in a second. So I'll see at the end. Make sure you chain one in between each cluster. At the end of row number two, you gotta watch what you're doing. So you're coming into the last space before the end and so you're doing a cluster. Yarn and we'll pull all through four, chain one. That right here on the very tip is the last stitch cluster. So just feel around and just stick your hook anywhere on the last section and do a, a one more cluster. It'll make sense in a moment why we're doing that. So then pull through all four. And then you're good to go. So now when you do this, you can count on the last row. There should be nine clusters again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So the row number two is just being repeated over and over. So you're just going to chain two, come to the first space in between the first two clusters and that's where you begin a cluster again. And you're just gonna zip back and forth on these rows, making sure you chain one in between the clusters and just get five and a half inches tall. When I get to the end of this row, I'm going to demonstrate for you just uh, how to end it one more time. Just make sure you got it in your head and then I will move on in this tutorial for something else. So please just uh, meet me at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way across, just chain one and in the end, just after this last cluster, just into like that chain two space area, put it in another cluster. And so you'll notice that that will always keep it in balance when you go to do that. And then make sure that you pull through everything and then that will conclude it. So when you start the next row, just like this is row number two, chain two, come to the space in between the cluster work and then begin again. So I need you to go back and forth now until it measures a total of five and a half uh, inches tall. So continuing back and forth, you're gonna go until it's about five and a half inches long. Okay, and so if you turn it over, it's about 14 centimeters. And so when you get there, you're going to fasten off. So I will be back in just a moment and then we're gonna carry on. So here I have, it. it's about five inches, five and a half inches, there you go. And I really wanted to have another one. So I just didn't wanna stop with the little sample. So once I'm done, I'm just gonna snip my yarn. Just keep it a little bit longer so that you can pull it through and just pull it through the final loop and that will lock it. Now, you're going to have to put this through a tapestry needle. There's no choice about that because the fact is is that you want to be able to secure these ends in because you're gonna use it, right? So putting it in and I'm just going to drag it through the edging underneath the stitch work. So just stay away from the edge and come on through. And when you pull it, don't change the shape of your scrubby. So in a slightly different path, going in the opposite direction. So you're gonna wanna do this with your starting tail and also your, your finishing tail and any tails that you may have. So pulling it through. I want it to be tight in that sense and then back through. So it should never fall out on you. So just give it a good snug pull and do any of your loose ends like that. And then we're gonna move on to the border. But before we move on to the border from now, I'm going to restart again using the Lily Sugar and Cream so that you can understand this concept. 
So let's begin again for those that would prefer to see it in regular yarn. Make sure that you use it using cotton yarn for your kitchen. 100% cotton. Lily sugar and cream. Bernat handicraft or peaches and cream are is your choice. And uh, just make sure it is 100% cotton. So don't use your acrylics for your kitchen needs. So you're going to then just chain 19. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So that's it. So let's begin row number one. So row number one, we're going to count to the third chain. So from the hook, so one, two, and three, turn it to the back hump. And I want you to do a cluster there. So you're just gonna go to the third chain, re -arno over going in, pull through, and pull through two and hold it. And do that two more times there. So yarn over and in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And then yarning in, going in, pull through two. So you should see four loops on the hook, pull through all four, and then chain one to move on. So skipping the next chain, going to the second chain over and doing it again. So yarning over, pull it through, pull through two and hold and do that three times in a row. So you just keep an eye and as soon as you see four loops on the hook, you know you're good to go. So pull through all four, chain one to move on, skip the next one on the chain and do it again. So you're gonna do this all the way across your chain and I'll be right back in a second and we'll just cover off the ending of this row in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way. I've already chained one and I'm coming into my last chain. Doing my last cluster there. Pull through everything and then hold it. So turn your work and you should be able to count nine clusters. So one, let me just count that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So row number two is going to be the whole repeat for the remaining until it's about five and a half inches tall. So let's begin row number two. To begin row number two, you're going to chain two and you're gonna come into the space between the two clusters and then cluster again right in that space itself. So on the scrubby it's just easy just to split that and do it. So once you see your four, you're done. Chain one to move on and then come to the next. So the secret is is how you're ending these rows which is I was trying to explain in the scrubby. So just continue to move on just doing your clusters with the chain one and then I'll show you how to finish row number two yeah. which is really the only trick to this row. So when you come in to the end of the row, you come into the space between the two last. You're doing your cluster and we still have to add one more cluster. So just pull through, pull, chain one and the last cluster is just right on the other side of this. You're gonna just slip it in. Just be consistent on where you put it. Once you see the four pull through. So that allows you to keep it so that you can still see nine clusters. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when you come over then and finish the next row, you're gonna be, see how this one's slightly over? So the next one will be slightly over. So when you start the row again, you're just gonna chain two and then come in between the cluster. And then just cluster. And then I'll see at the end of this row, number three, we'll just uh, verify you're okay. And then I'll leave the rest for you and then we'll keep on moving. So I've got the one in between the two last, chain one and then just right about there. Okay, that's where your last one's gonna go. And so you should be only counting nine clusters all together across that last row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I need you to go now and make this five and a half inches tall like we did with the scrubby version. So what I need you to do now is do your five and a half inches tall. I'll meet you there in just a moment and then we'll keep on moving. So now that I have my sample of five and a half inches, I'm ready to end this. So now we're going to just trim the yarn and then using your tapestry needle like I demonstrated with the scrubby version already, just pull through. I always like to turn it to the back after I'm done. And when I say back it just means that I finished on this side so I just like to turn it to the opposite side when I fasten and I think it's a personal choice. So you just wanna take this straggler and just go up underneath the stitch work. So stay away from the edge so that you don't have anything 
ruining the edge and pull through and when you pull through don't pull through so tight that you cannot um, keep the shape right. So just pull through so it's taut and then go back in the opposite direction and then one last time. So if you don't weave it in like that and you just weave it in with your crochet hook you're going to have issues uh, with these tails popping out. So you do need to do that and do any tails that you do have and we're now gonna move on to the edging. So no matter what one we're doing we're gonna do the edging is the same for both and we're gonna go back to the instructions. There's two rounds that make that up and uh, we're just gonna be doing the scrubby version first and then I'll demonstrate it again on the little sugar and cream version. So let's begin. So let's begin the scalloped edging. We're gonna start with round number one. So with any uh, color, it could be B, it could be the same color, it all depends up to you. So we're gonna slip stitch to just a corner of any corner you chose and then you're just going to um, chain one and single crochet into the same spot. Chain two and then single crochet into the same spot. So that will give you a first a corner. You're then gonna evenly work 13 stitches across the side and then on the corners again single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then that's your corner and then you're gonna continue. So you just have to concentrate and making sure you get 13 of these stitches in between the corners. So let's begin to do that next. So let's begin, just create a slip knot, creep a long tail so that you can use that later to secure that in with a tapestry needle and put it onto the hook. Just come to any corner, it can be anyone you wish and you're just gonna slip in to the most cornerish spot that you can find with your hook and then going in and then pulling it through. So you've joined it, chain one and then you're gonna single crochet into the same spot where you put it in and then chain two and single crochet into the same spot once again. So now your goal is to only do 13 stitches all the way across this thing. So it's kind of a neat idea. So just evenly space it. So just count. So you're just gonna say one and then two and then three and four, five and six. Noticing that I'm going up over top of the straggler. So we got six and I'm at the halfway point. I only want 13. So we just keep on moving. So we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And then you're just gonna go right into a corner. So make your next one. So you got your thirteen. So make your next one a corner. So single crochet, chain two, and single crochet and then move down the other side, 13 and then a corner and then 13 and a corner and then 13 and a corner and I'll meet you at the other side of this. So when we come all the way back around, I'll see you back here in a moment. When you get all the way back around, you have my 13 on the last side, you're just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. Just do your best to guess where you think it is. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the second and final round. So slip stitch to the chain two, you can actually see the chain two you can feel the chain two. So slip stitch there and then that's where the journey is going to begin. So chain two which will count as a half double crochet and in the same chain two you want to apply four more half double crochets. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, and four. So now that we have that we're now going to then um, skip the next single crochet. So we're gonna skip the next one right out of the gate and come to the next one and you're going to then single crochet into the next one and then we're gonna skip the next single crochet and then single crochet into the next one. So skip in the next single crochet and then come to the second one over and you wanna apply five half double crochets in there. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then you're going to skip the next single crochet and go to the second and you're going to single crochet and then skip in the next one 
and then go to the next one after that and there's gonna be five half double crochets in, in the same one. So one, two, three, four, and five. Skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the next, skip the next single crochet and then five into the next one after that. So five half double crochet. Four and five. So skipping the next one, single crochet the next one after that and now you have your chain. So you're gonna skip the next single crochet and go right into the corner and there will be five half double crochets in there. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And so let's just go through the recap. So you're gonna skip the first one and you're gonna single crochet in the next. You're gonna skip the next one sing and then do five half double crochets in the next. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then skip in the next one, single crochet in the next, skip the next one and do five and then continue that same idea going all the way around. So the scallop is very subtle and it actually provides a little bit of bunching up which will help do the scr uh, scrubby. So continue that all the way around and I will see you at the end of this round and then we'll move on to the Lily Sugar and Cream version after this. When you come back around you're skipping one, you single crochet into the one before the edge and then just grab that first chain two and slip stitch and I've already shown you how to weave in the ends using a tapestry needle. So that's all you're gonna have to do. So you can see it's actually pretty cool. So I'm just gonna leave a tail now and I've already shown you how to do that and we're gonna move on to the Lily Sugar and Cream version next. So it actually looks pretty cool and I really like the weight of these things. I'm gonna, I'm excited. <laughs> I wanna do my dishes. Okay, so I'll move on to Lily Sugar and Cream next. So let's move on and I'm going to do the Lily Sugar and Cream version. So just like we had before, so pick any corner that you wish and just let slip in your hook. And then yarning or uh, pulling it through to attach, chain one and single cro crochet into the same stitch the way you attached it, chain two and single crochet. So there is your first corner done. Now you're going to equally space out 13 single crochets across the edge and the very last one here you're gonna do a corner of single crochet, chain two single crochet. So it's just a matter of guessing. So just coming along the edge, so let's just start counting one to 13. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six so it sh should be close to the halfway point. So six and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And then in the very corner here I wanna do a turn. So I'm gonna do a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet and then equally space 13 going down and then your corners of single crochet, chain two, single crochet and go all the way around in the same manner. I'll see you at the end of this round. So once you get your 13 on the final side just slip stitch to the first single crochet and we're gonna move on to round number two. So in round number two just slip stitch to the chain two space and chain up two and that will count as a half double crochet and in the same space put in four half double crochets with it. So one, two, three, and four. So skipping the next single crochet, single crochet in the next one after that, skipping the next one and in this one five half double crochets. That's gonna be your repeat pattern. So five in this one, Skipping the next one, single crochet in the next, skip in the next, and then five half double crochets. And you're gonna do that all the way to the corner. So 
skip in the next single crochet in the next, skip in the next, and five half double crochets. Okay, skipping the next single crochet in the next, and then the corner is your next one. So you're skipping the final stitch and just put in your five half double crochets in the corner. And then skipping the next and then single, skipping the next and then five. So you already know what you're doing going across and that's what it will look like and I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. So make sure that you just continue with the same pattern. Reverse the video back if you need to cover going across the row one more time. So I'm coming all the way back around. I've got my five half double crochets. I skipped one single crochet, skipping the last one and just attaching it to the first chain two. So I've already shown you in the first part of this when we were doing the weaving off of the edge. So just cut your yarn, slam it through a tapestry needle and weave that in and then you're good to go. So these particular samples that we have here, no matter which one you did, you still end up with the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> That's it for now. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.